Hi, so I got a question from Steve Locke on how to create this MOSFET in ORCID Capture. I want to show you the overall steps to make a footprint and schematic part for this type of device. This is a special type of MOSFET that has not just one drain gate and source pin, it has multiple drain pins, multiple pins for the source, and one pin for the gate. But I want it to look like this right here on the right side, this internal schematic. I just want the three pins to appear on my schematic page, but I want the actual footprint to show up like it's supposed to. So how do I do that in ORCAD? Now, normally in ORCAD, you have to define a number of pins on the symbol and everything, and then it will look clunky. In fact, if I show you this part that I created here, um, and I edit the part, it actually looks like this in the part editor with all these pins. But when you place it on a schematic, we want it to look like this. So, uh, but then also when we place it on a schematic and it only has a certain number of pins, we want it to show up properly in the PCB design like so. So how do we do that to avoid getting a netlist error? I will show you. So the first step you need to do is find the data sheet for the device, right? Simple enough, pretty easy. And you look at the properties of the pins and everything in the data sheet, and you look at the pin numbers. One, two is the drain, uh, six, five and six are the drain as well. And the gate is pin number three, the source is pin number four. And what I'm gonna do is name pins S and D, these pads, as seven and eight, right? now. You're you already know how to create a part hopefully and so you would go and create a new library that's this .olb file so you go to file new library then you would right click the library and then save it as whatever you like once you've made the library you go to file new um well actually no sorry you go right click new part and then you and you're creating the new part you choose certain settings like you paste the footprint or um, the manufacturer number as the name and then for the PCB footprint you can name it whatever you like then choose numeric for your part numbering and then click OK oh and make sure you have homogeneous okay so once you do that your initial part will be created and you'll have nothing you'll start from scratch and the information here would be filled out including the PCB footprint if you already have it you can name it whatever you want and then make a PCB footprint that's based on that. Now I chose the package name or package type from the from the uh, sales page here. So I see, I saw this type F and I gave it the name, but I took out the parentheses and I use underscores where there were spaces and um, for spaces that were left over. The part reference is D because it's um, it's a, actually, no, it's not D. It should be something else like uh, EQ for MOSFET, but I'll leave it as D. And then for the data sheet, I put that there. Now, you know, you normally would add pins to the part, just like so you go to place pin and then you name it whatever. And so I would name it like one and one. And then you can also name this uh, number D and uh, like for the number you put one and then for the name you could put D underscore one and D for the main drain and stuff like that but I just stick with one and one right and then you place the pins all around the eight pins for the eight pads then what I do is I define which pins I want to be pin like the main drain pin the main gate pin and the main source pin I chose pins seven three and four. Then we need to short the pins together and make them disappear from the normal view. Here's the way to do that. To short the pins or appropriate pins together, create this property. So you click on this plus sign and then you have this property called pack short. What pack short does is it has a syntax where you choose different groups. You create different groups with using parentheses. So this is group one, this is group two, and then you choose the pins 
that get shorted together in each group. But the first pin number, this is very important. The first pin name, actually, because you use the pin names, has to be a pin name that is going to be visible on the final schematic page. So if we could look at the page, I want pin seven on my drain things to be visible. So I want pin seven to be first in this group definition. So that's why I have pin seven first. Okay, so we do pack short, select it, first group, I want shorted, pin seven is my drain. I hit a comma. And then pin one is also a drain pin. Pin two, pin five, and pin six, they're all shorter together. Okay. So those are all my drain pins. Then the next group of pins that are shorter together, I want my first pin to be uh, the source that is going to be visible. And that's gonna be pin number four. Now, if you swapped it and you had like say pin number five is visible for your source, for your final schematic, that's fine. You just choose five. Make sure the first pin name is uh, what's gonna be visible on the, at, the, at the final placement on the schematic. That pin four is shorter to pin number eight. Then that's my second parentheses close and that's my second group. Then I hit the check mark to add that property. Now this already exists, of course, so I won't add it. So you can close that. I already added it. Okay, so that is how you short them together. But shorting them together is not enough. We want it to look nice when we place the part on the schematic. We could place it as is, but all the pins will show and blah, blah, blah. So how do we make them disappear? Go to edit pins. And now you would expect to change these, right? normal view pin visible, right? But you can't. So what you have to do is to uh, determine the visibility for the final schematic placement, you would choose this thing, section pin ignore. Okay, do we want to ignore pin one? Well, do we want pin one visible? No, I don't want that visible. I just want pins seven. Uh, let me see if I could tighten up this window here. Okay, I just want pins seven, three, and four visible, which means all other pins, I want to ignore them. So hit yes, I want to ignore pin one. Yes, I want to ignore two, and five, and six, and eight. Do I want to ignore three, four, and seven? No, I don't want to ignore them. I want to see them. So once you've hit yes, you do that by double clicking and then choosing the selection. You need to make sure you click apply, then okay. Now, when doing the ignore property um, and closing your part and everything, now when you place the part, it will have it such that you go to your schematic, you go to your page, you choose place part, select only the transistor library or not transistor, excuse me, but the library that you custom made. Double click on the part and see the view in the part. You see all the pins, but when we place it on the schematic, boom, only three pins appear. And that's good. In fact, I could have actually made these pin numbers and pin names not visible. In fact, let me do that right now because I don't like that it's visible. So let's say you already placed a component. Um, here's a little trick I'm going to show you. Whenever you place a component and you want to update it afterward, don't update it through the schematic. Okay, so pin name visible, pin number visible. I don't want them visible anymore. Then let's right click, save, right click, close. Now, once we go back to the schematic page, oh, uh, and before I do that, let's open the design cache. Right click, update the cache for that part. Yes, yes. Go to the page, then go to your library, 
click on the component, refresh, click OK. Now, double click, place, right click, end mode. Now, where did I get this DG and S? I just added them as text to the part. I forgot to mention that part. So you can add DG and S so you know which is which. Okay, now that we have our component, what you do is you go ahead and create your footprint. Okay, so you do like a, you open PCB editor, go to file, new, and then choose like packet symbol wizard. You create your special custom pad stacks, you place them in the correct sections, and then you create your footprint, you name it the same thing, you name it the same name as what you put in your uh, part. So if we go to Allegro PCB Designer, PCB footprint name is this. Okay. You create your footprint, save it somewhere. Make sure it's visible to your Allegro software and the path preferences. Once you've created the footprint with the same name, you're free to go ahead and make a new board, make a new PCB. So I'm going to close this software program. Okay, I'm gonna hit save. Now when I go to the project design, go to tools, create netlist. And then you choose your normal settings like if you want an input board file, you can do that. If you want an output board file, you could say MOSFET 2. And we'll make a new PCB. And then choose open board and or get PCB editor. Or if you have Allegro, the full version, at your work or something, choose open board and Allegro PCB editor. Now let's go ahead and click OK. OK has been modified. Sure, yeah, it's fine. Go here, click OK. And then the program opens with your new board. There were no warnings and no errors. So go to place. Let's see if our components will place. So choose components manually. Then check mark this D1. Okay, that looks good. Check mark the D2, very good. Check mark both of them by checking this thing. Hide, let's zoom in, click to see if it will place. It placed, great. Click to see if that will place. It also placed, good. Right click, choose done. That is fantastic. So the pins show up just like they're supposed to. They're matched with the pad stack names. These texts are the names of the pins, not the numbers. And that can get a little confusing, but just understand that these are pad names, pad and pin names. And the names have to match the names given to these pins in the part. All we did was essentially we added the seven or eight pins that we needed anyway to the part and that we just made it look good on the schematic okay using pin ignore allows you to hide pins visually from the schematic once you place the component and using short allows you to avoid having to make the pins put them all on the schematic and then manually short them using the uh, connect wire uh, feature or tool okay all right, I hope that helps. This is a really interesting way to create a footprints that look nice and the schematic parts that uh, schematic symbols that look nice when you place them. All right, happy engineering.